Agas, it has taken seven years and more for Syria to gain back about 70% of the country from ISIS and from US-backed militants. There is about 25% left southern Syria and about 5% left in eastern Syria. So today, they started taking care of eastern Syria, where ISIS is um, holed up. The Syrian army began bombing a terror group of ISIS positions in eastern Syria. Um, according to local reports from the southern province, Syrian warplanes and helicopter gunships conducted um, today multiple air raids over ISIS hideouts. The reports added that new military re reinforcement from the Republican Guard were deployed within the last three days to the east province uh, prior to the jets bombarding. ISIS terrorists who were evacuated from southern suburbs of Damascus, we now know that Syria has control of Damascus, they're now stationed in a small enclave or enclave located in the northeastern countryside of As Suweda. So that's where they're bombing now. As you can see, that's where they are starting to take care of the last remnants of the ISIS uh, terror group in their country. And then they're going to turn their attention to southern Syria, where the US-backed militants are, uh, the Kurdish forces. The US has warned Syria not to attack their forces, and Syria have responded, saying they want the US out of their country, and um, 70 Syrian tribes have come together, um, saying that they're you know, ready to expel these US-backed forces from the country. So the potential for conflict is increasing as the time ticks down. Um, the Syrian army began... Sorry, that is the wrong report. <laughs> yeah, as the time ticks down, move on. Then... So while the widely speculated deal on southern Syria among the key powers, that's Turkey, Israel, Russia, the United States, involved in the conflict is still not reached, the military situation in the area is developing in its own direction. According to pro-government sources, the Syrian Arab Army's General Command gave militant groups in southern Syria time until mid-June. Ramadan ends on June 14th. One of my subscribers pointed that out to me the other day. Thank you very much. It's very clear that there's correlation of events happening around that time donald trump's birthday come to the white house u.s flag day end of ramadan we've got the announcement from iran saying that they're ready to uh, start up their nuclear program and in connection with that they instructed their atomic agency or atomic energy organization to prepare the infrastructure which they have now done for developing advanced centrifuges at its natanz nuclear facility in connection with that we know that israel sent over two fighter jets uh, I think it was about two months ago or a month ago. Time is just blending together now. That scoped out the nuclear facilities um, and came back. Then we had the report from Benjamin and Yahoo about them lying about the Iran nuclear deal um, and their ambitions towards that. So if Iran starts up their nuclear program, which it looks like they are going to do because it doesn't look like the Iran nuclear deal can be saved, um, the things that the Europeans want to include, like the ballistic missile program, Iran is saying there's no way it's going to be included. So unless Europe is willing to bend to Iran, then we're going to see the end of the Iran nuclear deal and we'll see Iran start up its nuclear program. Then we'll see Israel, maybe along with the United States, launch a, a strike against the uh, Iranian nuclear facilities. Um, and somewhere in that country, maybe in the desert, maybe somewhere else, I believe there is maybe one or two or maybe even a stockpile of ready-to-go nuclear weapons. We heard the reports of them testing their ICBMs out in the desert secretly at night so no one could see under the cover of radar. So put the ballistic missile and the nuclear warhead together and you've got a launchable weapon, as I've said before. So mid-June is a really, really, really high watch time. Really, really high. Two days after the North Korea summit as well, North Korea and, sorry, Kim Jong-un and Donald Trump in Singapore, they just released the World Peace Coin, Peace and Safety, Sudden Destruction. you got Kim Jong-un talking about how he's, you know, afraid of being assassinated at the summit, which is what I think or thought was going to happen to Donald Trump. So it's, it's kind of weird in that sense. Obviously, as I say that, you know, I don't think Donald Trump's going to die, maybe just get shot at and, you know, gets rushed off or something like that. But, you know, he's in... He's in Asia. A lot of the countries, you know, kind of like him, but the North Koreans don't. And, um, you know, it's possible one of them could go rogue. Who knows? But we've got a lot to watch. So 
I just want to kind of make sure that everyone's got all the information that they need uh, moving into the middle of June and all the things that we need to watch for. And unfortunately, the death toll at the Guatemalan Fuego Volcano has risen to 75 people now. And um, there's a, at least 192 people missing. So the potential for that number to increase is unfortunately, you know, this is going to happen. Um, when, as I've said before, to people who live um, around or near volcanoes, you know, it's fine if you want to live there when they're not erupting, uh, you know, but as soon as they start erupting, there is no point sticking around. Sure, it's fascinating, but it's also deadly. And, you know, it's dangerous. So just be, you know, careful. I don't like seeing unnecessary death. And that's one of the main reasons I make these videos. I want people to be safe, you know. So you guys have a good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and God bless you all.